So hi everybody, today I'll be interviewing Linda, who is a software engineer at Google, and today we're going to be learning about how she got into her career in software engineering and what advice she can give to us. So I guess, um, you, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure, okay, so uh, I was made in China, but I moved to Canada at a very early age, and then um, I went to University of California, San Diego for my undergraduate degree. Um, there I got a bachelor's in computer science with specialization in bioinformatics and a minor in general biology. So yeah, um, apparently if you pack all of your classes together, you can really um, just flow through undergrad. So I graduated in three years, a lot of my friends did as well. And then after I took the summer to kind of take my time and study for the coding interview, and then I applied and now I'm working as a full-time software engineer at Google. Cool. So when you were in high school, did you know that you wanted to major in computer science and you wanted to go into software engineering? Or was that something uh, for later on? No, not at all. Um, when I first uh, went to college, I thought I wanted to be a bioengineer. So that was like my original train of thought. I wanted to do more like bio-related things, more healthcare-related things. But um, when I applied at UCSD, I got in as a biology major. Right. So at UCSD, if you don't get in as a bioengineering major, you have one chance to apply into the major at the end of your first year. So mm -hmm. that's what I did. I like prepped all my classes. I did all the work and then I applied, but I didn't get in because my GPA wasn't high enough. Okay. I was pretty bummed out because that was like my only chance of applying into bioengineering. Yeah. So at the time I was like, I really want to be an engineer. So then um, I applied to the mechanical and aerospace engineering department. I don't know why I like did not really have any interest in that, but I just wanted to be an engineer. So I applied, I thought maybe I could switch, but um, I also did not get in because my GPA was not high enough. Um, then I thought like, oh, I'm taking a lot of CS classes. I think I'm kind of interested in CS. Let's see how it goes. So I applied, I got rejected again. And then finally my fourth time, like two years into college, I still wanted to switch majors. So like at the end of my two years, I applied to CS one last time and I was lucky enough to be selected in lottery. And that's when I changed my major and I was a CS major, like basically at the end of my second year. And wow. I had like one more year of college left, so I had to like fit in all of my classes, but I made it and I, that's yes. how I like, yeah. <laughs> Did you do an internship in software engineering before you decide to become a full-time engineer or was that just your first job right out of college? Yeah, um, I was actually pretty set on being bioengineering. So during my two summers of undergrad, I was working in a bioengineering lab yeah. where they did a lot of like tissue engineering, um, 3D printed tissue models. So that was what I was doing research in a lot during the summers. I don't actually have any software engineering internship experience, oh. which is pretty crazy because I graduated and I was like, I have no software engineering experience. Who's going to take me? But um, <laughs> turns out if you just... I'm hmm? oh, sorry. I was going to ask, so how did you make the switch that you were interested from biomedical engineering to computer science and software engineering instead, like after graduation? Um, I think um, after graduating, I was kind of in the state of like, I don't really know what I want to do. Like, do I want to go pure tech? Do I want to go biotech? Like I knew I wanted to do software of some sort, but I didn't know like which um, exact industry I wanted to go into. But I think I just applied to as many places as I could. And um, it just happened that all of the places that accepted me for an interview were all like pretty strict tech because it's kind of hard. There's not many biotech companies out there. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, I kind of was just like, it's my first job. I'll just like see what I want, like see if I like it or not. Like yeah. it's not the end of the world if I don't like get my dream job at first. So mm -hmm. that was kind of my mindset. I knew I wanted to do software, but I didn't really know exactly where. And I guess I still don't know exactly where. I'm still kind of exploring that. Cool. So what does a typical day look like for you at a big tech company? Do you, um, is it also um, a sprint or agile based work environment where you run on uh, bi-weekly sprints or how does um, your typical day look like? Hmm. So it's like, um, I would say that working in the office and working from home are very different. So um, in the office, my typical day would be I wake up and I drive to work. I arrive at about 9.30, 10 a.m. It's kind of late. But um, <laughs> then I grab a coffee, I go into my first meeting. So we have some, it's usually an engineering standup. So those meetings are like everyone kind of stands up together and we go over what we've done and what we plan to do. Okay. All the engineers. 
Other types of meetings um, are more like core meetings with the overall team where we have PMs, we have different managers, um, people from um, collaborating teams working together and talking through what um, their goals are and what the plan is. So mm -hmm. it's like kind of a mix between these different types of meetings. Right. After those meetings, I would just go directly to my desk and start working. So this includes just coding, which is like my job is just to code yeah. <laughs> and also includes kind of like talking with my mentors, kind of scoping out projects because you can't just code all the time. You have to like know yeah. what you're building. Right. So it's like scoping out all the requirements, kind of like learning as I go. So that's kind of my typical day at lunch. I go to lunch and then I code the rest of the day with some meetings like here and there throughout the day. Cool. So on your team, is it all software engineers or is it a cross-functional team where there's designers, um, product managers, and all different sorts of people with different skill sets on the team? Or is it mainly just software engineers? Um, there's definitely a bunch of people with different skill sets on the team, but the people that I interact the most with are mainly all software engineers or managers. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the skills that you think would be really important for a software engineer to have? Like soft skills or technical skills or like specific programming languages? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I would say the main skill, I feel like this has been said a lot, but um, the ability to know how to learn is a, a very important skill. Like right. you can you can know like 10 different languages, you can know a bunch of things, but like when you get to the job, there's always gonna be something that you don't know. Especially at a big company like Google, where a lot of the um, technology that we use is very internal. So you don't have access to that until you actually get there. So the ability to learn and to pick up new skills is a pretty important skill, I would say. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, I think just, being an engineer in general, like you have to be able to um, kind of scope out a project and um, know all of the requirements that go into a project. And for any engineer, like software engineer, mechanical engineer, like hardware engineers, like we have to be able to know the constraints of our project and come up with a solution that fits all of those constraints. Right. So um, just like basic engineering abilities, I think is pretty important. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I feel like, uh, I think software engineers kind of get the rep of being a bit more awkward where we don't have as many social skills, but um, I think that's also pretty important to be able to kind of like collaborate with your team and like learn from your mentors. So like not just like um, all of the coding skills you need, you have to also be able to like communicate and like communicate your idea is also a very important skill I'd say. Right. Are there any challenges or things that are particularly hard working as a software engineer? Um, do you, is there anything that you spend a lot of time on that you find frustrating? <laughs> yes, all the time. I'm still like, I'm still learning a lot every single day. Um, I would say one of the biggest challenges is when I first started, like imposter syndrome was really there. Like yeah. I thought like, how did I make it here? Like I really don't have the skill set that all of these people around me have. But um, what I learned was that um, maybe I just had a really nice team and a really nice mentor, but um, all of the stupid questions that I thought were super stupid, like they were like, I was stuck on that too when I first joined. Like here's all the help I need, here are all the resources that you might find helpful. So like um, just being able to reach out and like ask questions that I would think are stupid, but someone could like unstick me really quickly. Like those, yeah. those are things that I like had to learn how to do. Um, in terms of working, I think like on my team, it's also like I'm literally the only female software engineer. We have a team of like over 10 people. I'm the only girl. So that hasn't really been a challenge, but it's been something that I've like noticed um in my everyday like meetings um but for me i don't think it's really made that much of a difference like everyone's been super nice we're all really focused on work and um all of the questions that i ask like everyone is like um they have they're really brilliant people like the people i work with so i'm like really lucky to have to have the opportunity to learn from people like them yeah that's so true I also struggle with imposter syndrome a lot, like especially when you're starting out. Um, mm -hmm. I've, during my internships, I'm lucky enough to have good mentors and also like what you said, coworkers that were readily able to help you whenever you had the question. Nobody was like, oh, that's such a dumb question. Nobody was like that. But sometimes like once in a while, like 
especially online. I find online is where all those gatekeepers or like those programmer please live. And then when you sometimes when you post questions, you get like a lot of hate or like, oh, this is such a dumb programming question. Or like you can only code Hello World. And it's like the only test that you can pass is true expect true. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like that doesn't exist in real life when you're in industry. Like everyone's really yeah. nice. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I find like online, that's what it all happens, and it could sometimes deter people because as a beginner starting out, you could be like, "Oh no, are other people like this?" <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah, at work, I haven't really had anything like that. It's just like mm -hmm. sometimes you get those weird people who are like just hiding online, like writing me messages when you try mm -hmm. to ask them something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, so do you think there are any growth opportunities for people trying to enter software engineering or what are some of the things that um, happen when a software engineer say is five years into the job, do they become senior software engineers typically or what kind of happens? Um, I think it's different for every person in every company, but basically what was explained to me was that um, I'm a I'm the entry level software engineer. So um, I, as I go along my career path, I basically have two branches that I can go to. So one of them is more of the manager path. So this includes, this is kind of like becoming what my manager is to me. So someone who manages a bunch of software engineers or um, individual contributors, and their job is basically not to code, but to scope out the project, to assign work, to delegate, and to really like, um, determine what is important for the overall project. Like, where do we want to build towards? What features do we want? So, um, and also managing like uh, people and making sure that they feel good, that they feel like they're contributing, that they are growing. So this is one path that I could potentially take is the more manageable path. The other path is uh, more of an individual contributor. So this is someone who still wants to code, still wants to be very technically active in the um, project and someone who is, an individual contributor. So they're someone who has a lot of experience um, because they've been in the industry for so long. So I think that pretty much is pretty accurate for software engineers. Like you can either go down the manager path or you can like continue being an individual contributor. Okay, nice. Yeah. I'm not sure, do you have similar um, thoughts on that? For growth opportunities? Yeah, I think something similar to that. The ones that I've seen from people who mentored me, it's like either senior software engineer, like they continue going down technical path or become a manager. But there's also, I think different types of managers. Is it like, um, I think some of my managers that I had were more engineering managers. So they were also into the technical work, like sometimes they code too. And then there's also product managers who focus more on the business side and they don't do coding. So I guess a variety of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you have any advice for people who may be wanting to go into software engineering, maybe as a student or um, somebody who is considering going down a path, any resources or um, things that they should take a look at? Mm -hmm. I'd say just go for it. Like you can think about it all you want, but like at the end of the day, you have to put in the work, especially for those coding interviews. Those are tough, but um, luckily for us, we have all the resources available to us. I recommend a book called Cracking the Coding Interview. I feel like everyone's heard of it. It's a really solid book. Um, for me, what I did was I went through all of the questions three times before all of my interviews. So I basically <laughs> memorized everything. Wow. I did a bunch of leak code questions, which is just like a nice way to kind of like get your brain working of like coding in Python. So leak code is another one where you can like, it's like very simple, like small programming questions that test uh -huh. your knowledge. And another, uh, another website that I found was really helpful to me in the process was this website called Pramp, P-R-A-M-P.com. So that's when you go online and you're matched with a random stranger and then you ask them a coding interview question, they ask you a coding interview question. And so it's a very like, it kind of mimics what you would expect from an actual online coding interview where you have to talk through your code and like come up with a solution within half an hour. So oh. I felt like that was a really good way of getting me into like the space and the mindset of like having to talk through my code and code online and talk to someone as I'm doing it. So um, yeah, nice. review your data structures, make sure you're solid on one language, um, whether that be Python, C++, Java, anything. Um, yeah, and my other advice is just like, just to go for it. Like you never know 
what you're going to get. I never knew what I was going to get. So um, you just have to go for it. Yeah. That's sad advice. Yeah. What's the website that you said called Cram? Like P R A M P dot com? P R A M P. Okay, sounds good. Wow, I didn't know there's a website that matches you up with somebody who can practice with you. Mm -hmm. That's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like Omegle, but for computer science. <laughs> Is it Omegle or Omegle? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good concept. <laughs> well, Thank you so much for doing this with us. This was really helpful, and I think a lot of people asked if it was helpful. <laughs> I had a lot of fun.